Hey guys. Now let's look at some of the Python's data types. There's a few number of data types like booleans, numbers, string, bytes. Uh, but today we'll just discuss about a string and a list. So let's look at a string first. So a string is basically a sequence of Unicode characters. So for example, you want to have a variable name that can hold your name. So now you can access the name object using the variable name. So you could also do help str to find out what other things you can do with this string object once you create the object. So you can just read through this and I can show you a few of the few of the functionality you can use so you can basically just try John like this here so that just prints it out but you've got no reference to um, the John right now because it you just printed it out and you can't access it so yeah that's another thing to notice so the variables are not like containers so when I say a equals to John so John is not inside a um, a is actually a reference to the memory location where John is stored uh, so yeah it's it's really easy to get confused with that so think of a as just a reference so you know where John is written in the memory so that's how you access it so when you type a computer remembers the address of the memory so you, you just see John on your screen so for example what you can do with the string is you can also do a 1 and that gives you O so the index starts with 0 1 2 3 so you can just do a and then the bracket and the index so if we do 0 then you get the the first letter of the string so you can also do a 0 to 2 so that should give you from 0 and 1 so it excludes 2 so just hit enter so you get zo and now what you can also do is a 0 and then you can do 1 and you'll get the full letters because that is a step how many letters you want to move up to so we're going one at a time that means we get the full letter but what happens is uh, by the way you can press alt p on windows to bring the last syntax you've typed on, on idle so what happens is now let's change the step to two now you'll see only J and H. O and N will be skipped, be skipped because we're going, we're taking one, skipping the word, uh, the letter in between. So let's hit enter and we only have J heads. So you can think of this as a starting index and the end index, which is excluding, and then the step, how are you going? So that's that's how you can think of. And now what you can also do is minus one. So that gives you the last letter of the string. So now you can do the same thing with a zero. Well, let's just do minus one and nothing else. So you get everything after minus one because we're going in reverse so you're just getting j or h because that excludes the last index which is minus one so that's a string now what you can also do is let's say test is 
really good at computing. Now what I want to do is I want to count how many letter U are in there so I can just do so use the variable test and then look for a method for that object so there's a method called count you can just use that and pass in the letter that you wanna count and it will actually give you how many times the letter E was used within this string so you can you can do similar with the R so it found it once you can do double O's found once and let's do T just to see it it's repeated three times so yeah you can do uh, all that and also you can do tests dot so you, let's say for example um, I'll probably just use the test variable ends with so you can do ing and you got true because the end of the string is ing so if we do a dot ends with uh, ing uh, so yeah that's going to be false because john doesn't end with ing so this helps you I mean the first thing I can think of is finding files with the particular um, so if a equals to my file dot txt and let's say your folder contains all sorts of file and you can just go for all files in folder and then ends with so you want to select only the file that ends with the txt version so you get the text file from that folder only um, but I'm pretty sure there are a lot of other reasons you'll use it now looking at escape characters this might be a bit tricky to get your head around but let's look at this example first so if you type name A is a Smith so as you can see we're using these codes symbol to write that name so we Python knows this is a string but what happens if we want to write it's Smith Smiths so let's look at that so we need to write A and then Smith then we need to write first a backslash what this tells Python is that now hey Python I'm putting a special character in front of it please take that as a, a character for the string not as a Python symbol so for example if we type that in and then S and we close that now if you type a variable so you get Smiths so you can actually type that in now that's one example and also if you want to write two lines a string that prints in two different line then you need to also use the backslash uh, but with n that means a new line let's look at that so persons detail equals to name plus n and then uh, a's slash n and date of birth let's close that and now if we print persons detail person P R S O N person's detail of course I typed that wrong so name A's and DOB so you can see the slash N here has worked as a new line so we get the new line for each of those and <coughs> what excuse me what also you can do is um, let's say you need to type in a URL for something uh, Google homepage 
equals to HTTPS double slash now the first backslash is saying I'm gonna I need to type in the next line as a character so that is my character I need to type in another two so that is my character these two will help me help Python understand that these two are the the actual backslash I need as a character on my string so then we'll do www.google.com and when we hit enter now you'll notice two different things let's access the variable variable first you'll see we can still see four backslash because this is how we have a stored it and this is where we are accessing the stored variable but now if you go and print that Google home page now you can see we've got two backslash so that's how Python understands this string that's how it looks at it but that's how it saves the variable so that's all about strings for now guys thanks for watching the video I'll see you in the next tutorial